Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Sneaky and today we're doing our first impression on Sindrion. We've done Frega, I hope you've enjoyed that video and you've all were screaming for the Sindrion video. So here it is in its full glory. So let's go over my first impressions on Sindrion right here on my channel, Mr. Sneaky. So here we are, smash a like, comment and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons content. I always try and live stream throughout the week and give you guys all the juicy gossip with free to play series and guides on heroes, behemoths and new name it when it comes to Call of Dragons. So we're going to be going over Sindrion today. He is the newest commander with our beautiful Frega in the mix. So you can obtain him in Season 2, the same as Frega. So you can't obtain him in Season 1 yet, guys, for all those new players. You need to complete your first season, get resetted, and then you can grab them. But Sindrion is the, in a different area compared to Frega. So if we're going to go and see how to summon him, you can see he is a strongest Lord event. So when we go to the event, similar to Frega, you can try and get lucky and unlock him for free, hopefully, in this event. Or you can go down to the Strongest Lord event and compete against other, obviously, Lords in your server and try and unlock him. Obviously, this is different rankings. You know what Strongest Lord is. I would not recommend it for those free-to-play low spenders. So, Frega, What Frega? Sindrion, should we say? Is he any good? So that is a really tough question because in my eyes, Sindrion is a really good commander, but only for the spenders. Yes, you heard me right. Why? He is going to be the main archer rally lead. That's going to be part of a different variety of combos, I can imagine, in the future. But because he's behind the strongest lord event, guys, that is the reason why he's, in my opinion, not as good as Frega, as well as some of his skills that we're going to go over as well. Why he's, you know, not as good as Frega. So I hope that makes a little bit of an intro understanding for you if you're looking to possibly unlock him and use him as a archer hero. So when we go over his skills, we're going to explain his first skill, hopefully, correctly so you guys can understand what it does because it's a little bit different compared to before so when we look at skill one he gains keen and rapid fire so rapid fire allows him to have a chance of launching a normal additional attack every second for three seconds this does go up to seven seconds so what this means is Every time your Sinjong would fire a normal attack, you would fire in a second attack straight after. Every second that would occur. So instead of doing one hit, two, three, you're doing two, four, six, eight. And this goes all the way up to seven. So in theory, you're doing over 14 hits worth of damage compared to only seven hits of combat damage. So you can see where the damage of his, you know, kit or is relying on now it's a very very special mechanic and another thing to talk about before we go on his skills in regards to this is the units so if you are a league of order player this is going to be very very good on you because when you are a ballista player your buff increases your normal attack and damage every time you launch a normal attack so this is very very good with the ballista march which is really cool to see because obviously it kind of gives you a bit more speciality within a faction so compared to the spring wardens or even Comparing it to the Wilderbergs normal uh, increase to all damage you deal to that target, it is nowhere near as strong compared to the League of Order. So that's a really cool thing to note for maybe those spenders and advanced players looking at maybe trying to mid max on what march you're going to run in with. So that is his first skill. I hope you really have gone over it nicely. You understand it. Every second we're going to launch in every, an additional attack. So instead of 7 attacks in 7 seconds, we're going to be dealing 14 attacks 
in seven seconds. So that is the way we are going through the rage skill one. But when we're going to skill two, this is why already in my eyes, compared to Fregar, he's already lackluster. Because when you are besieging a city or stronghold, and a really cool thing is if you click stronghold, this includes passes, fortresses, alliance towers, and alliance keeps. So any sort of PvP building within the alliance area, you will gain the 10% attack bonus as well as a 5% defense penetration. This is a really powerful skill when it comes to rallying, but that is the thing, guys. When you're rallying or fighting these structures, this is the only time you are gaining this buff. And that is a big, big problem. A lot of players compare to this to any other matches, even comparing it to Kanara. You already have these bonuses while you're in the field. And you already have all these bonuses because your marksman units. And on here is when you're getting hit. So when you're getting hit by a normal attack, which you always do, you gain these bonuses. So as you can tell, the bonus you get here isn't as universal. So it does restrict, obviously, his kit. But when we go to his third and fourth skill, it does fix a lot of the problems. The third skill is a normal crit rate bonus. Yes, it's a 10% normal crit rate bonus. So if you did try to pair him with your Fregar in total when Fregar triggers her skill, you're gonna get a 70% crit rate bonus, guys. So that means them two together in a rally is an absolute truck ton of normal attack hits. So that's gonna be one meta match potentially for rallying archers to be scared of. Obviously, we're gonna talk about that later, but that is his third skill. We're going to get a nice 15% health bonus as well. Really, really good. Two stat lines for PvP. You care about health. The more health you have, obviously, the more damage we can take. And the more damage we can take means the longer we're out. And the longer we're out, the more damage we are dealing. So, I hope that makes sense with Feather Strike. And then we'll go to the Forest Shadow. In the first second of battle, whenever we gain Rapid Fire. So, as soon as we gain Rapid Fire... For the first second, we're going to start launching an extra attack every single time. And when we do that, we gain a 20% attack bonus. So any time our skill now triggers and gets us that extra normal attack, we gain a 20% attack bonus. And this lasts for three seconds. So a very, very offensive hero aiming to try and punch through all the shields and maybe um, a t you know tank capabilities with a, the as much attack and normal attack as possible on a march so obviously the first third and fourth skill really really good because you can use this no matter where you are if you're in the open field or if you're rallying but obviously the skill two is where the restriction is Obviously, in the rally meta, this is going to determine where his ranking is going to be. But for me, I'm going to rank him around maybe an A tier hero for now. Just because for me, I don't think a low investment player or even a free to play player should be considering even looking at Sinjon. This is going to be for certain players that are aiming to be an archer main and also those players that are aiming to have an archer rally leader for their main alliance. And those, again, are normally the big spenders and whales that are in the game. So that is my first impressions on all the skills, everything to do with him. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. When we come to his pairings, his pairings are going to be very situational, I think, again, due to his nature. Obviously, the main pairing a lot of people are going to go to is Frega. For obvious reasons, we're going to have so much normal attack damage and normal attack damage crit damage on top of our Syndrion that is going to make those double hits absolutely shred through a single target. Obviously, having that little bit of my, um, rage accumulation is going to be nice against the target so we can keep running through them. But 
Obviously, there's going to be other options. I do honestly like Kanara. Why? We get that 20% normal attack damage bonus, which is really, really good. We get 10% hero skill damage reduction. So both of these stats are really, really powerful when we're in the field and rallying because we're going to get a nice amount of stats against the pass. Obviously, her skill one does a bunch load of damage, which is nice, but we reduce the target um, damage dealt by 15%, which is really, really good and for us because now we're making the, the gap between the pass to us very, very big, right? So their, reduce, their damage they deal is 15% that, you know, reduced as a 15% increased and we have all the normal attacks hitting at double the amount of rates, we should shred through them. Obviously, we have a nice 30% attack increase. And on top of that, we get the beautiful physical counter-attack damage dealt bonus. You could also try and use Nico. Nico's going to be an exceptional one again for the same reasons. We reduce, we, we reduce their defense, so we're going to hit them even harder. We also gain a nice amount of stats purposely for our marksman. And then on top of that, we get counter-attack damage and normal attack damage when we get putting this on our march even as a low spender at 51111 but you know you get so many great pairings that you could potentially have with Sinjon as you can see and the thing is these are all pairings guys that are, could be used in the open field but his real power is going to rely in rallying and taking down structures for the alliance. So again, we're going to see how that develops. We, this is the first impressions on it. And hopefully when we see some of the other players use him and see what their opinions on him are, we're going to get a better idea where he actually sits and fits in the season. I can't obviously show you the um, talent tree for him because we do not have him unlocked. But... Obviously, I would be going down some sort of rally and precision tree. Why? The rally tree gives us the most amount of flexibility in the rally, as well as the new rally talent. If we go into Alistair, we can now take fair offense. So if we're going against a, say, pass, and their units are clearly stronger in their skill ones because of the buffs or debuffs they apply to us, we can f cause a fair offense, which will disable the skill ones of that fight. And as you can see, create a nice, almost fair attribute system against those units. So we're going to see how well this would play out. But this is the way I would run it, because then what would occur is it's all about normal hits. And that's what we are really, really powerful at. So I would definitely consider going down the rally tree and then going down the precision tree because we get more stuff aimed at normal attack damage if you go down the precision tree. So obviously we're going to see in the future what trees we're going to have for Sindrion. But for now, guys, that is going to be the video. I hope you enjoyed it. That's my first impressions on him where I think he's going to lie. Obviously, he's not. In my opinion, not as good as Fregar, but he's still an exceptional hero in his own right, but not for the purposes that we're going to need him for as a low spender, free to play player, or even a medium whale spender. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Smash like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, guys. If you've learned something today or if you've enjoyed it, obviously slam a comment below with your thoughts on what you think about Sinjian. I'd love to hear your opinions on him. It'd be great to see. But with all that said, we're going to obviously move on to the next video. So stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out.